I have the best we could ever plan. James Franco's having a giant party. <laughs> This place is beautiful, man. This place is like a piece of me. You two just stepped inside me. You let us both come inside you. Yeah. Boom. Thanks, James Franco. Hey, everybody. Welcome to What the Flick, Bed Manco. It's Christy Lemire, Alonzo Duralde. This is the end. <laughs> My no, friends. not of uh, not of what the flick, but the, the finally a movie where Jay Baruchel plays himself. <laughs> <laughs> Alonzo. Uh, yeah. So the the premise is basically that uh, this group of uh, of real life friends and co stars uh, Seth Rogen, Jay Baruchel, James Franco, Jonah Hill, Craig Robinson uh, are playing versions of themselves, and uh, they're at all at a party at James Franco's house when oh my God, it's the Rapture. Take a look. <laughs> The sheriff's office is urging people to stay in their homes right now. Ah! Emma Watson showed up. Give me everything you have to drink! There are six of us, you cannot rob us! Oh, Hermione yeah! just stole all of our shit. Son. So I guess they were playing not so much themselves, but the their the public images. The persona. Their personas, right, sort of. Mm -hmm. Something Which, like that, or or a, or a you know a skewed satirical version. Right. right. The version of Michael Sarah is like batshit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I won't say why, but it's, it's very it's not who you expect him to be. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think it's very telling that you know the rapture happens and. Everybody in this movie is left on Earth. I mean, not just the stars, but like all the other famous people who make cameos in the film. Like they didn't get swept up either. So you know, the, that, the Hol yeah, that, that is Hollywood right. saying something about itself right there. Yeah, that's Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg saying something about Hollywood, it right? Could be. Because yeah. they, this is their first movie they've ever directed before. They yes. wrote this and they co-directed it. Yes, they they yes. previously wrote Superbad and uh, the Green Hornet for better or for yes. worse. Which they make uh, fun of a lot. I they mean, do, they're willing yeah. to make fun of themselves a lot in this yeah, movie, which I appreciate. They make fun of the Green Hornet. They make fun yes. of Your Highness. And and, and Franco's Oscar hosting and you know a lot of that kind of stuff so I like the movie for a long time and it's yes it's about dick jokes and yes it's super raunchy and every other word is fuck and it's what you expect from these guys but I believe that at its core there is an underlying statement about male friendship about fame about identity about loyalty I think that's trying to get to something deeper than just the comic trappings would suggest I don't think it gets there I don't think, I think it's I, trying to I'm not I, sure it gets there I think, I think it's think trying it's, to I think that we think it's trying to I think that <laughs> I, I, I they mean, don't I don't know I, I don't I don't I can't peer into their souls and these are guys who I uh, really universally love I yeah. just didn't think it was funny I didn't think it was funny after the first scene which I thought was funny. There were there were a couple of moments, but those moments when, to me, you're surrounded by so much stupidity, mm -hmm. and uh, that they don't you know they don't stand out anymore. If 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 you're the like the scene with Michael Sarah in the bathroom, <laughs> um, I think if in the middle of a funny movie that might be hilarious, but in a movie where I was already rolling my eyes, then I don't even appreciate that scene, which was pretty good. So what were you rolling your eyes at? What what did not work for you? What part of the humor? It's just, you know, I, I don't, you know, there's, I don't mind raunchy, mm -hmm. I don't mind filthy, but it's got to be clever. Mm -hmm. It's got to be funny. I didn't think it was clever. Sort of, I heard him talk about it on Howard Stern, so I'll spoil this one. But having Jonah Hill raped by a giant demon. With a Rosemary's Baby reference Which in the, the middle of it, yeah, yes. I got it. Okay, so the Rosemary's <laughs> Baby's reference in it is a little like the reference that goes, hey, we've seen Rosemary's yeah. Baby. It's not like a super <laughs> clever reference. So I just didn't laugh. I didn't I, think it was funny. Look, this is all obviously super subjective, yeah. and it boils down to I laughed. I didn't laugh. I laughed. Yeah. I laughed nonstop start to finish. I thought it was brilliantly funny, and I thought that it was very funny in a very strong horror context. Like, they take the end of the world seriously. They take the whole stuck in a house and you know, trying to, to ration the food and fend off the interlopers and all that stuff. You know, it felt very kind of Night of the Living Dead at times and you know, everybody's got their different strategies. No, let's do this, no, we need to do this. And I, you know, so for me, I thought you know, horror comedies are tricky balances to work out because if it's too funny, you don't take the horror seriously anymore. If it's too horrifying, it stops being funny. Uh, and I thought it did both those things really well. Uh, you know, I, I found it really effective, and yeah, I think that it also addresses the sort of underlying male anxiety that is in so many of the the Apatow movies, particularly the Apatow movies that these guys are in, which is the notion of being straight guys who live in a world where they've had to kind of wrap their minds around the fact that gay people exist, 
and yet at the same time they still want to be able to have a certain level of male intimacy, even if it involves making fun of that male intimacy mm -hmm. as it's happening as a way to deflect the fact that they need it so right. much. The gay jokes are the buffer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the dick jokes are the buffer. Right, in, in you know, so they can still hug. You know, <laughs> or they can still, they can still cuddle at they night. They can cuddle yes. at night and all sleep in the same little, you know, uh, cubby hole of the house because they're afraid or whatever. You know, I, I, so I think there's a lot going on here and I think it's all interesting. I think it all works. I liked it for a long time. <laughs> it is over long. That whole long final section um, takes a while when, you know, when the climactic stuff happens with that, you know, is, is their fate, I won't say. But uh, it takes a while. And then the final production number at the end. Is brilliant. <laughs> it's a funny idea. I'm not sure it's funny in execution. I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen similar plays on that joke done better in yes, recent years. Yes. Uh, and there is a bit of a sag in Act Three, but not so much that it took me out of it. I, I hate that these guys have this for this movie, and I will rush out to the next movie with any of these mm -hmm. guys in it. By the way, the line where Jonah Hill does say, "I'm Jonah Hill from Moneyball." <laughs> that, that I do. Uh, so I mean, like you get there are moments there where, and I tried. I kept thinking, "Okay, I'm not in the right mood." I was like, you know, I was doing, I was doing Three Stooges stuff. I was like, okay, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Be, uh, but I hate that like they're making me the curmudgeon that like that that like I can't believe I'm watching a scene where James Franco and Danny McBride, who we haven't, I don't think we mentioned, mm -hmm. but uh, where they're having a an argument over how much semen they're gonna spew, <laughs> produce and on each other. Uh, that I was like, for that, I would think like on paper, I would be like, oh no, great, that scene. And I was like, oh, it just didn't, it didn't work. And that, and that, and that so, frustrated me. So do you me. think that if, if somebody not, besides Rogan and Goldberg had directed it, it might have? If it had been leaner, a little I, more efficient. I don't know. I think that well, there's. Please, Appetite would direct it to be like 20 minutes and longer. Hours <laughs> I love Launch. I love Filth. I thought that there was a degree of silliness in this that I thought took away from the humor, and I evidently could not, could not get past. I think that fans of these guys will, who who think that so much of what they've done is so clever and so smart, and that their comedy is so good, will be disappointed. I disagree. Um, I think we were a little too old for it. I mean, and yeah, I mean, you, not you. I'm you, older than you. I know you are. I know you are, but I, I took my husband to see this, and he is 43, and I'm like, come with me to see it. I hear it's supposed to be the best movie of the summer. We're going to have a great time. And he was so pissed. He was like, I hated that movie. It was masturbatory. It was self-congratulatory. It would not end. He was so mad. So I'm like, but I think, but people who are 15 years or so younger in the audience loved know, it, and they were like, it's rad. I, 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 I think, OK, let me, let me throw this out as a possible litmus test. Kevin Smith, pro or con? I mean, sometimes <laughs> pro and sometimes. Sorry. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I, right. I think this movie, you know, I mean, the, you know, and, and very, there's always been sort of a passing of the reins from him to Apatow, and I think this movie feels very Kevin Smithy a lot, both in the sort of. Uh, the, the, the dick pop joke stuff, references. but but in the, the self-reflexive pop culture mm -hmm. stuff and the and the self-awareness. So I, for me, it worked. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, I, I obviously I'm, I feel bad. Um, <laughs> uh, what do I know? <laughs> I liked Guilt Trip. There you uh, go. Uh, I, that was my favorite stuff. I was going to ask you: is, Can we apply the After Earth test to this? Do you care about these people's fates <laughs> more or less than Jaden and Will Smith? I think I gave After Earth a 4.4, .4, so evidently I like this a little better. No, I I, I do. Look, this is much better than After Earth. If, I, if, if you can only see <laughs> one, apocalyptic, <laughs> one movie. apocalyptic movie this week, <laughs> see, see this is the end. And, and, and who knows, I, I can see that maybe in nine months I will see this on HBO and I will think, oh, no, that's funny. That's possible. What's your number? 4.5. 6.5. Okay, I'm going to jank it up. I get 8.9. I, I wow. thought it was hilarious. So that's 6.6 6 overall for this is the end. And it's, a, it's what is it? It's 81%. 81%. Everyone likes it. it.